These events prompted philosopher Karl Popper to put forward a radically new view of how science works. I assert that scientific knowledge is essentially conjectural or hypothetical. The great scientists such as Galileo, Kepler, Newton, Einstein and Bohr represent to me a simple but impressive idea of science. These are men of bold ideas, but highly critical of their own ideas. They try to find whether their ideas are right by trying to find whether they are not perhaps wrong. They work with bold conjectures and severe attempts at refuting their own conjectures. Inductivism agrees with the empiricist view that all knowledge must come from experience. Popper's position, by contrast, parallels the rationalist view that our deepest insights come from pure reason, not experience. Popper really did kind of crystallize, just as Bacon crystallized, Popper really did crystallize another conception of science as being essentially theoretical. There had been many, many, re, many again, immediate reasons for this. I mean, Popper was personally, but the world was collectively, bowled over by the way in which Einstein had transformed our conceptions of space and time, and even, perhaps even more dramatically, the way in which the quantum mechanics had transformed our conceptions of underlying causality. And Popper grew up in, I mean, his youth was formed in a world where Einstein and Planck and then Heisenberg and Bohr were household names. And these were people who did their work, he thought, in the head. It was the theory which transformed. Where do new ideas and theories come from? My view may be expressed by saying that every discovery contains an irrational element or a creative intuition. In a similar way, Einstein speaks of the search for those highly universal laws from which a picture of the world can be obtained by pure deduction. There is no logical path, he says, leading to these laws. They can only be reached by intuition based upon something like an intellectual love of the objects of experience. In an inductivist view of science, tests are supposed to confirm theories. Popper maintained instead that the role of tests is to refute or falsify theories. The rationality of science lies not in its habit of appealing to empirical evidence in support of its dogmas, but solely in the critical approach. Science has nothing to do with a quest for certainty or probability or reliability. We are not interested in establishing scientific theories as secure or certain or probable. Conscious of our fallibility, we are interested only in criticizing them and testing them in the hope of finding out where we are mistaken, of learning from our mistakes, and if we are lucky, of proceeding to better theories. So science, he says, makes fallible conjectures. The bolder, the better. We like them bold because then they have the promise of giving us a lot of uh, information about the world. But of course, the bolder they are, the less likely they are to be true. So we aim at bold conjectures, expecting that they will be false. We try very hard, says Popper. This is where it starts to get a bit unrealistic. We all try very hard to falsify our conjectures. But if they prove not to be falsified by our experiences, then we tentatively accept them. What are the criteria for bold guesses as opposed to talking through your hat? The bold guess which is testable is the one which has merit and a bold guess which, which you cannot test against anything has no merit. So being falsifiable, being testable becomes the touchstone of being scientific for Popper. Inductivists sometimes envision science as one vast structure, 
we build it level by level, setting new knowledge on top of the old. For Popper, perceiving all theories as fallible altered, but did not destroy this vision. Some of our uh, generalizations turn out to be more stubborn and uh, enduring uh, than others. Uh, therefore, we feel more dependable. So we're, we're pinning the, what seems to be the more conjectural and less, prob less, less certain uh, on what we feel to be more certain. And uh, the, whole, the whole matter is uh, simply uh, afloat that way. Or a better uh, uh, analogy uh, than afloat is uh, Karl Popper's, uh, uh, Sir Karl Popper, uh, uh, figure that s science is a great structure built on a bottomless swamp, uh, on piles that are driven vertically, very long, long, sturdy piles uh, down into the swamp, bottomless swamp, but driven far down, uh, and many of them. And that's what keeps uh, our science on a pretty even keel. And uh, uh, we uh, keep uh, fixing things up and uh, uh, restoring the balance when it's getting a little, uh, when we find that uh, uh, it needs it. It's the way we get by without absolute certainty. <laughs>